And uh, welcome to this uh, installment of Frank and Mary here in Hopkinton. If you haven't seen this show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 70 of us, uh, 40 in Worcester and 20 in Westboro, where I am most of the time, and 10 in Boston. And so everybody there gets to do what they like because there are so many lawyers. And I do nothing but elder law. Uh, this show is not about elder law, though. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to the Senior Center, you know that I'm often talking about my Maple Leaf couple, Frank and Mary, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they're living in Hopkinton, they don't want that to be San Diego or Boston or even like Marlboro. They want to be right here because this is where they know people. This is where they want to stay. So the point of this show is to let you know the people that you should know and the programs you should know about so you can stay in Hopkinton for the rest of your life. So I don't know that because I live far away in Marlboro and so I got this great co-host, Amy Beck, that I uh, suckered into uh, to, <laughs> to doing this show with me. That's right. Uh, Amy Beck, who's been at the Senior Center now for quite a few, how about many years? seven years. About seven, seven and a half years. Seven years, right? Mm -hmm. And so she finds all these great people, and she did it yet again, I think. So Amy, who so, have we got today? So today we have Sarah Bateman, who's the Veterans Agent, Veterans Services Director uh, for the Metro West area, which she can tell you about where that covers and, and what's all involved in that. So we're going to talk about veterans, veterans and there are a lot benefits. of seniors, right? And, we, and, and so you've got veterans kind of on the real tail end of that who are mm -hmm. still World War II in Korea. And then we got this flood of people my generation who are Vietnam right. veterans. So there's a lot of those, that's a lot of folks. And actually it's not just seniors, but we're, today we're focusing specifically on seniors. Right. So, so, so first, can you just tell us like, so what, this is Metro West, this is a, it's, it's a Metro who, West district. So towns that? within yeah. Massachusetts can band together and form a district. It has to be approved by the Department of Veterans Services. Yeah. Um, and once they do that, we are formed as a district for towns. Medway, Hopkinton, Holliston, and Ashland. I see. And how, how long has it been a district? Since 2011. Oh, for a while now. Yes. And how, how long have you been here? Five years. Yes? Yes. Is this fun? Yes. yes. It, is, it is a fun job. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. It can be a very fun job. So let's just, just talk about it. As we were talking about before the show, you know, there, there are, this is kind of a multi, multifaceted. You get people that come in with, I'm sure, a huge range of issues, right? Yes. So can we just kind of talk, talk about the people that you would typically see? Or if there is such a thing as a typical person, right, that right. you see? <laughs> and, then, and then just talk about the issues they're bumping into and the things that you can help them with and the things you can't help them with, you know, because I'm sure people have a whole range of things that they're talking to you about. And kind of looking forward, where is this going? You know, are there, are there programs that you're expecting to change or that are going to expand or contract? Just talk about it. Right? Okay. How's, that? How's that? That That's good. <laughs> is that good, good opening? It's a yes. broad. <laughs> that's a broad thing. It's that's a broad right. business. Um, right. A lot of times we get people who walk in. Typically, I am seeing um, an older demographic coming in to mm -hmm. our office. A lot of times they're coming in to find out what benefits they have. As a veteran, they may not have utilized any of the be benefits except maybe uh, the home loan guarantee. Um, but they come in, they're looking either for VA health care. They may be coming up to age 65, and they're looking at what their options are for additional benefits um, or health care as they are looking towards retirement. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of VA health care applications, enrollments, mm -hmm. and sometimes they come in and they say, I don't even have my DD-214. I need to get Your that. Your DD-214. And that's the military discharge. I see. So we Which can we always tell clients, don't lose the, D, the, <laughs> but it the, the discharge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we'll help them either get that, enroll in VA health care, um, I usually have them talk a little bit about their service, what type of job they had, the military occupational specialty, um, where they served, if they happen to serve in Vietnam. Um, I definitely want to talk to them about presumptive conditions because Agent Orange has exposures, creates some disabilities and conditions mm -hmm. that they don't even have to prove service caused it. It's presumed service caused it if they were present in Vietnam and exposed to Agent Orange. Uh, there are, now there's Blue Water Navy and Brown Water Navy also has been added to that. So I basically have to feel out where they were, what they did, and see if there's disability compensation pieces. If they have financial difficulties at this time, we have the state financial aid, Chapter 115, 
So I always want to make sure, you know, can I help them that way? And also seek any other VA income sources, whether it be disability compensation or the non-service connected pension, which is income driven. Which is, so, because I do some other shows, right? So mm -hmm. I've talked to some veterans agents, but, but it, it's not, it is my understanding, it's not every veterans agent that also does can help the veteran with these these federal with applications for federal programs. Some am I, am I wrong? some refer depending on the volume of the chapter one fifteen yeah. in the office. There yeah. are times um, some of the pension with aid and attendance that is a frequent yeah. call we get from uh, adult children of veterans, and maybe they need assisted living or you know higher levels of care, and they're looking to find out about aid and attendance which they have to qualify for the pension first, and then aid and attendance is a, a, an additional compensation to that. Um, I don't necessarily write all of them. I may refer some of them. Um, but I at least get them started with the documentation and field it to see if it's a legitimate option. So that's well, a lot of stuff. It is a lot. And, and I was actually wondering, do you do anything for spouses who may come in either without they've lost their spouse or, you know, like the adult child coming in and saying, hey, can you help? Yes. I mean, obviously the spouse came, but, but is there any benefits for a spouse? Yes. If, let's say, a veteran does come in and they end up having 100% service-connected disability, the spouse is also then entitled to benefits. Um, mm -hmm. CHAMP VA, which is the civilian health care through the VA for the spouse, um, they can get a military ID to access the base. And um, if they come in and they've lost a spouse, or they had a spouse that had a, a veteran spouse that had 100%, um, we look to see if it was a service-connected cause of death. And at that point, we can write de um, the de uh, dependency indemnity compensation, and that's called DIC, and that is a non-taxable income monthly. And that also comes with some other benefits and the Massachusetts annuity which is $2,000 a year, also non-taxable. So there are, yes, a lot of benefits for spouse. So is the starting point just contacting you? I mean, if, yes. if, you're, a, if you're a veteran, you know, contact the veterans agent and see where we go, what's your, whether there is anything that they can get from Yes, her. I've had spouse um, a, that came in and she said, you know, my husband passed away. I, don't, I have no idea if I have any benefits and come to find out that she was entitled to a monthly compensation. So it life. never hurts to ask is the never big thing. never hurts to ask, yes. So can you step back, can you start off by talking about this, the so-called, I think you used to call it a Chapter 115 yes. state benefits. And I think these are benefits that are also actually funded by the, by the Commonwealth of it Massachusetts. Is, yes, yeah. it is um, unique in the country. Massachusetts is the only state that has this benefit. I didn't know it that. It was made yeah. in, I didn't know yeah, that. it's the only state. Um, it became a law in 1861. It was created then. It's the along. Civil War benefit, and it's still there. They actually, they said the Massachusetts Bay Colony actually offered some um, benefits during the French and Indian War as well. Really? And then at the start of the Civil War, they created the law as well as the Department of Veteran Services. We're so progressive. We're in so progressive. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so it's, and how does it, work? so do you get paid like in gold? This is like a real old oh, benefit. That would be good. No, no, um, no. So, what, no so how, how does it work? So it is need dependent uh, based. So we have to field their income and their assets to mm -hmm. meet the certain levels. Um, mm -hmm. And if they meet the criteria, they could actually be eligible for an ordinary benefit, which is like a cash benefit, a fuel benefit, mm -hmm. and reimbursement of out of pocket medical expenses. So I, I do have um, a good amount of recipients that receive reimbursements for their Medicare Part B. Mm -hmm. their supplement policy and Part D and any co-pays that they pay. So it, it, Which is there's great. a range. Yeah, there's a range. Which is great. And can you, can you give us a sense of what those, what those the income and asset criteria would, would be? It, the income, is in it, it, there's some variables to it. Of so, course. you know, the, the, the cost of their shelter is factored in. Uh, 489, I believe, is the maximum um, shelter allowance that is considered that can vary the benefit that can be subtracted from total income. It's roughly around okay. two thousand. I think it might be two thousand twenty now. Um, and that's two thousand twenty dollars a month. Yeah, it, it varies, and then yeah. it, and I'm probably not quoting it 
Exactly. Yeah. Um, but you, but you're saying that, that so that the, in terms of income, it's like a, say it's around two thousand dollars a month, except that there may be a shelter allowance built into that, so that it may be that even if their income is say twenty four hundred dollars a month, then if you subtract for the shelter allowance, it may be that they. It's they a little more qualify. complicated than that, but it, yeah. I just it want to get will. The, yeah, get it's a little concept. hard to explain, yeah. but it does vary a little bit. Yeah. Um, they can actually be over the income limit, and it'll create a spend down. And if they have a monthly medical liability um, payment, we can reduce the that by the spend down and still qualify them. I see. So there are I there. See. Are, are many variables that can affect what, and we, they might just receive uh, medical only um, benefit. Which but, is the reason why, as Amy said, the bottom line is to get, they should show up. Absolutely. The key yeah. thing is to show up that you're like, you, yeah, that we you're provide there, a document checklist on inquiries, and you know, we tell them what documents we need, and from yeah. that, it's a 5000 for a single person, uh, 5000 uh, asset limit, $9,800 for uh, a married couple, so their assets cannot exceed that. I um, see. Now, does that include the, that? But that is does not include their primary home that they live in. I see. But or our car, those are items that's strictly that financial that. instruments. I see, but it includes all other kinds of cash, cash assets. Yes. I got it. So and if now, they owned a second home that was creating income, that would be, the income would be counted. I get it. And and so in my day job, I do a lot of I speak with a lot of seniors. So we're often talking about mass health. So we're often talking about the look back period. We're saying, well, you know. You can qualify for these programs, but you can't have given away your assets or reduced your assets for a given period of time, typically five years before you apply. Is there a, is there a look back period regarding qualifying for, the, for these veterans programs? For Chapter 115, we do look back in the sense that we collect several months of bank statements yeah. Yeah. Um, at that time, and we'll ask certain questions to find out, to, and we have them basically attest to the fact that they have not um, relegated assets in order yeah. to qualify. Um, the VA system now for the pension, they have instituted a look back, which they did not have on the federal side. And it's going to be a three year look back, but it began October, 2018. So right now it only goes back to that date. So there, so there is there is a kind of an informal look back period at this point regarding the chapter one. And you yeah. said there's a cash, what is, the, what is the cash? You said there's a cash benefit as well as potentially recovering uh, health care. Ordinary other, benefit is yeah. what we call it. And so if their income, um, if they qualify for yeah. that, basically yeah. their income is lower and that will bring them up to a certain level. I see. So it subsidizes up them up yes. to a particular income level. That, if, that could be a really important benefit though. Yes. For, for, like for a lot of these folks, right? Absolutely. And I think that's that's where my biggest thing with all of this, you know, Go to the veterans agent. Come to the senior center. There are so many opportunities and so many benefits out there for people to take advantage of, or at least see what they're capable of getting. That it's important to check them out. And you know, we um, Sarah has office hours at the senior center, but they make their appointments through you, um, and she goes to each of these towns and has office hours. Yes, that's a very busy job. You it, got four towns. <laughs> Yes, we have four towns. I do have a part-time uh, veterans agent that also helps pick yeah. up some office hours. So, yeah, that's pretty share intense. The, that's share pretty the job, <laughs> share the wealth there. <laughs> so, now do you want to? Can you talk a little bit about that large one? The, the one that you that you you say you get a lot of calls for, and and I know that for many folks that I've talked to who are in an assisted living community, I remember hearing one statistic that, in, at least in some parts of the country, as many as as high as seventy percent of all the people who are in assisted living are there getting an aid and attendance benefit. And, 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 I, and I, it makes sense because assisted living is, is you know, fairly expensive, but, right. then, but, but I think for many people, they just don't realize that, that that's what can help them get to assisted living. You know? So can you just kind of talk about that a little bit? Yes, um, I do get a lot of calls with people trying to figure out the financial end of assisted living before it begins. And sometimes right. what happens is with the veteran's pension, um, if it is the veteran, then the income threshold is higher than that of a survivor of a, of a veteran. Mm -hmm. But the income's pretty low. So they have, their income has to be below that cap in order to qualify for that. And that has to be, they have to be eligible for that before they can get the aid and attendance as well, which is aid and attendance is based on a doctor's report on the form and 
basically stating they need a, a assistance with activities of daily living. Um, the pension piece, what happens is sometimes somebody will still be in their home looking to move towards assisted living and they're really not spending down their income enough to qualify. Um, once they're in assisted living, I will get calls from people that are spending down asset, and at that point in time, if their income is two thousand a month and it's five thousand a month to live there, and they're there for medical reasons, their income is zeroed out, and they will qualify most most of the time. Asset limit is one hundred twenty thousand now. They have raised it, um, and it can be slightly higher than that if they can see it being spent down um, quickly and there is time that it takes to process it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people will call and they want something done Immediate. tomorrow. <laughs> well, <of course. laughs> and, it, and it's a process, um, but there are other options. I do referrals to some um, types of businesses that will assist them in getting the assistance into the home maybe you know, immediately. So there are different right. options. And I think that's, that's really what folks need to realize is that not, not only is that, can that benefit be helpful if you're in assisted living, but even if you're at home, if you're ending up with a lot of expenses at home because you need help with the activities of daily living, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of people that need that kind of help. If it's the veteran themselves that is the, the recipient of the care, um, a lot of times I will look towards VA healthcare as the first route because once they're enrolled and they have a primary care physician, services can be written through the VA healthcare system for home health aid oh, or can, can home you talk, services. Can, so see, I, this is the part. I've heard of, I've done the, 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 um, the um, uh, aid in attendance in terms of what the, what the, what the initial benefit is. I know nothing. So can you just talk about what the, what, what that, how you sign up and who's eligible to be part of the veteran system, the like VA system? anything in the, VA system, there's a form, the 1010 easy. <laughs> the 1010 easy. That's the initial enrollment well, it form. Sounds like it's easy. That, that, it that, it that, is that, pretty easy, really. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not that difficult. Um, and we get them enrolled via that form. And we've had some success in, in enrolling people quickly that have an immediate need. Um, VA healthcare is considered, um, it qualifies for the minimum essential required if someone does not have health care, a veteran does not have health care and they need health care right away. Um, it's a very easy process. Once they're enrolled and they have a primary care physician and they, they can you know establish their medications through the formulary and things like that, there are different services within the VA health care system. There are social workers that can assist families in directing care. Mm -hmm. There is um, a caregivers program that will assist the caregivers of veterans, be it the spouse or another family member or even a friend. And there's another program out of Boston um, called VIP, and it's Veterans Initiative, I believe, mm -hmm. or Independent Program. And if they require the assistance of, um, I think it's three activities that they need assistance with, mm -hmm. They can qualify through that program. They have to be enrolled in the VA health care, um, but there is no financial criteria, nor is there a service connection criteria. And that program will actually give them a stipend to help pay for a caregiver. So that's a really good program, too. So you just have to have been a veteran? Uh, yeah, for, you have to be a not, veteran. And and for, and for any, uh, do you have to have served for any particular length of time? Do you have to have been in war, a war? Do no. You have to have, no. No. And just to get uh, into the system. Typically, if you have a, a DD-214 of any type, because some people say, well, you know, I was in the Guard and they're active duty for just the training piece of it, which does not qualify as a veteran status in Massachusetts for Massachusetts benefits. However, for the VA healthcare system, they could have been hurt during active, uh, their active duty training period. That has happened. People have gotten service-connected disabilities based on a training accident or something of that nature, so they can still apply. And, and once you're in the system, once again, I had thought that you only needed to use VA doctors, or you could only use people that were in that system. You can you can you do that? Will will the VA pay for eat for your, for your own doctor or provide it insurance? No, for the others? VA healthcare system is its own system, but you can maintain parallel 
civilian care. So you can maintain your Medicare Part B, you know, a Medigap supplement, your primary care giver that is in the civilian sector, and we recommend that because the VA does not have an ambulance system, and if you do have an incident um, and need immediate care, you will be taken to the closest hospital, not West Roxbury right. in right. Boston. So we do recommend keeping both, but uh, you can't get a um, civilian doctor's prescription filled at the formulary in the VA. A VA doctor has to have written the prescription. I see, but they, but they maintain their own drug system also? Yes, yes. Oh, so are there people that, that end up doing like Medicare A and B, but in, but in terms of de dealing with their drug issues, they, they use the They VA. can make choices. They can have their Part D, and they may find it easy to maintain that. Um, the VA has a mail system, so they can mail your prescriptions. So some veterans find it easier to get their prescriptions mailed to them. Um, they compare. They can shop you know, basically, and look, and I've had some veterans say, oh, I don't need the VA health care. I, I, I don't need it. I've got great health care. And then they come back and say, I think I, I want to go ahead and do that. I just found out I have a new prescription, and it's $700 a month. Right. So and the if they do have a service connection, you know, for whatever that prescription is for, yeah. it's going to be free. And if they're 100%, they're not going to pay a copay. But the copays right now, I think, are 8 15 and 24 for most of, the, most of the typical prescriptions. They're small copays. Like compared small. to yeah, some compared. of the yeah. insurance plans, yes. So then with all of this, you got to ask to find out what's available to you for you. Yes. And so make that appointment. Yes. Make the call, whether you're a spouse or whether you're the actual veteran yourself or the family member who's looking for information for how they can help as well. Yes. And are you, is, that a, is that a regular time here in Hopkinton? If there are, if, if, is, well, is we have a website um, where we post the hours. We're usually um, every oh, other and Tuesday afternoon. if you can get, get that to the station, they'll put that as a kind of a header on, okay, the, great. on the show so that the people have that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not a walk-in at the center, and that's the important thing. They have right. to make the appointments ahead we of time. We do get walk-in sometimes, but we do try to schedule just so that somebody's not left waiting um, and doesn't get to talk. Right. when they need it. Um, so we do try to schedule as much as we can. So so can you talk about, you, obviously you're talking with all the other veterans folks all the time, right? Do you, do you, do you foresee any changes coming to the system? Is there, t is there discussion about, are there any new benefits that are coming up? Are, you think, are there any things that you think are going to get canceled? Are there things that you think are you know, not working great, but you think is going to be better? What well, they've, they've been updating in the, in the Massachusetts in the Chapter 115. Um, they just increased the burial benefit. So if you have an, um, an in, indigent um, situation where a veteran needs to be buried and there's no family or there's just not enough money, um, the burial benefit just increased. It doubled, basically. And they adjust the income levels and certain things like that. So they've, they've been trying to keep pace with... The economy, uh, the VA has streamlined their appeals process, which I've seen some good results so far. Um, so I think changes are mostly in a positive direction. I don't see things taken away um, that are going to impact veterans negatively. And, and like if somebody is coming in and applying for these programs, so are, do, you, do you actually help them with the application? Can you do yes. that? You don't, you don't, it isn't like a hands-off. Uh, <laughs> no, well, no, it's just that that's a concern. You know? Oh, absolutely. That's, right? that's why we, we, we definitely try to achieve a high level of customer service in our office. And basically, we will try to field a lot of these calls you know, first. And I use email a lot to send them forms or give them information. There's some things I may not be able to fill out, but if I have the, the military discharge, we can sit there and fill out a lot of the information right. for them and then right. direct them on what blocks we need filled in and, and really give them guidance or sit down with them either way. Excellent. And you said there's actually, there is actually an appeal system built into this? so that if The VA reason... system has. The VA, their claims, uh, pensions, all of that, any decision that comes out from them, if, if it is not a desirable uh, decision, you have the right to appeal, and they have uh, several different levels of, of appeals, but they have, it was taking years um, in many cases, but now it seems to be an improved 
pays. S system. And, yes. and I know from folks who have dealt with the, the aid and attendance benefit, I remember that used to be a, like a one year, and but I've seen you know recently cases in three months, four months, and, yeah. that, and that benefit, you know, folks should understand once you get the benefits retroactive to the day that you apply. So that Good. if you do can, the intent to file, yes. So yes. It, it'll we try to get an intent to file that is sort of like a save the date, and will um, retroactive compensation to that date, and but it'll give you one year from that date to file a fully developed claim with all the supporting documents. Which is a huge thing, because these, the, these amounts are like gigantic. So this was just wonderful. Oh, good. This was wonderful. We're so, glad you were here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you for thank, having me. Thank you for all of this, right? I know that it's very complicated, and I'm just gonna go back to Amy's theme throughout. Show up. The key okay. thing is if you're a veteran, or if you're the spouse of a veteran, or the widow of a veteran, right? Yes. You just need to find out, right? Right. You lose. You're, you're, they're never going to walk into you, and and it's going to actually cost them money to walk in and talk to you, right? No. Like, oh God, you're so bad, right? <laughs> you always a penalty, right? So, the moral of the story is very simple. Um, you ought to meet her, right? You ought to get down and talk to, to to these folks. If if you are a veteran, or if you are the widow of a veteran, we're going to post the hours, mm -hmm. right? Amy, thank you very much. This is just right. another wonder, another wonderful. Uh, oh. um, once again, the goal of this show is to really help folks who yes. might not know, who might not know, and to put a name to a fa you know, a place, right? So it's like, you don't look that intimidating, right? <laughs> Hopefully I, right? not. Not right. at all. <laughs> right? we, I could talk. We could talk to her, right? Well, and that's what I'm glad because I think putting a face to the veterans agent helps people know who they're talking to and, and what their kind of information they're going to get. So, again, thank you very much. For thank, you. thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much thank again. You. Thanks so much, and we'll see you on the uh, next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hopkinton. Thank you very much. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother. Yes. You, your football buddy, your football buddy. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org.